Whether you're aiming to conquer long distance rides, you wanna tackle challenging climbs, or you simply want to improve your endurance on the bike, establishing a solid base is essential. But what is a solid base, and how exactly do you train it? In today's episode of Tristan Take Video, I'm speaking with World Tour Cycling Coach and Head of Science to Sport, John Wakefield, discussing the fundamentals of base training and four different training sessions that you can use to establish a solid platform in your fitness. John has previously worked as a performance coach with Team UAE and helped helped Tadej Pogacar to his two Tour de France victories. He now works with Team Bora Hansgrohe, coaching the best riders in the world to victories in the world's biggest races, while simultaneously running the Science to Sport Lab here in the center of Girona. If you've been following me for a little while now, you'll know John and I have made a number of episodes like this over the past 12 months, designed to help take your cycling fitness to the next level. But if you are new here and you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I hope you'll hit subscribe and then enjoy today's video. This is four training sessions to improve your base cycling fitness. Alrighty, cool. Welcome to today's episode of Tristan Take Video. Today, I'm back here in the Science to Sport Lab in the center of Girona, as we've done a number of times over the past 12 months. Now, I have some questions about base fitness because it's something that not a lot of people really talk about. We like talking about the higher end of performance in terms of VO2 max and FTP and things like this. But the importance of base training is, is really there. It's ever present and it's super important to get your base stronger to make you a better all round cyclist. Before we get into what these four sessions are, I'm gonna ask John a couple of questions Firstly, can you explain in a better way what is base training and what's the purpose of base training? Yeah, good question because I do feel it's a little bit misunderstood from people. So for me, it's about building your aerobic fitness and the importance of building your aerobic fitness before you go into your season or before you start doing any of the higher intensity efforts or any intensity efforts is it's if you take a pyramid, that your base training essentially is your base of your pyramid. The bigger and stronger the base, the higher your pyramid can go. So your peaks and your intensities and that on the top end of the pyramid are always stronger should you have a stronger base. And then so that then leads me to the next question of when would you look at doing the most amount of base training? If you're talking about throughout a season, when do you guys prescribe base training? Our base training is typically, if you look at the months, it's November, December, maybe January, depending when that specific athlete starts racing again, depending on their calendar. But it would either be once your season had finished, you've taken whatever, one, two, three, four weeks off at the end of your season, and you start need to get back on the bike. That first block of training that you would do is essentially your, your base block. Yeah, it makes sense. You're sort of putting yeah. down the foundations for what's to come. Yeah, for what's coming. And that can be drawn out a bit slowly, depending, as I said, when your or their races uh, start in the year. Okay, yeah, cool. So that then leads me, I guess, into the next obvious question is, can we get into these four sessions or what are the four sessions? And mainly the other question I would have is, why are they not the same as just riding around? What's the difference between just riding around for base fitness and what you're gonna to prescribe to us today? Well, one I would presume is based on a time perspective. Not everybody has huge volume of hours. So you wanna kind of maximize the time that you have in terms of a stress response. In the old days, base was just that. You just rode your bike where times have changed Thank goodness. Training has changed, science has changed, and everything that has come about. So what you were doing in, say, in the old days in 30 hours, you can now do in 20 hours, possibly with kind of proper structure and, and get a much better return on, on your training investment. It's, it's quality over quantity. All right, so should we get into what the sessions are? Let's get into the first of the sessions. What have you got sure. for us? Your first one is standard, just go ride the bike. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Okay. So, so we revert back a little bit to old school. So whatever your time available is, one, two, three, four, five hours, whatever on that specific day or on certain days, you can go and do the hours. And then what I do like to add in into those where you just go ride is, which we've mentioned before, is just getting in some 15, 20 second neuromuscular sprints sort of halfway through that ride. So if it's, say, three hour ride on a Saturday, you can add in those 15 second neuromuscular sprints, just get those pathways going and you know, super easy, no intensity, um, and re re really good session. Okay, so just simply out there riding around, yep. three or four neuromuscular sprints, starting at a very low cadence, yep. and then just ramping it up, holding it for say that 15 seconds that we've discussed in previous videos. Yes, correct. Yep. It's interesting because sprinting doesn't seem like a base fitness kind of thing, but I guess as we've 
discussed in the past as well. This kind of sprinting is not actually to train your sprint, it's to get those neuromuscular pathways firing. Yeah. Well, you Correct. just mentioned this. Yeah, and, and, so, and just getting some leg speed going. Because typically when people think of a sprint, they just think all out, crying, snot out your nose. <laughs> kind of, when you send me the videos on the side of the road, it's, <laughs> that's, that's what people think of in a sprint, but there's different ways of approaching that. Yeah, so one of the important things we've said many times in those previous videos is with the sprints, don't shift the gears in the middle of the sprint. Don't put it in a harder gear as you sprint and try and hold a force. It's just about getting your legs just turning over. Yeah, correct. Yeah, cool. I think I've got some good footage to lay over the top to show. <laughs> to show this just like <laughs> yeah. spinning, spinning. Okay, cool. cool. So that's session number one is just riding your bike and then integrating yep. a few of those neuromuscular sprints. Yes, yeah, spot on. Super easy, low intensity, and you can still do it. If, you know, if you're riding in a group, you can also still do it in a group. Yeah, just so, drop off the back yeah, and then do your sprint, do your sprint. And, and come back again, super easy. Alright, and then uh, yeah. on to session number two. What is the yeah. session number two that you've got for us? Session number two will be, again, we've mentioned this, but I like adding it into the base block, he's doing our me metabolic work. So, you know, on that, I know we had mentioned sort of between 80-85% of, of FTP in our previous videos, but during your base block, I'd lower that down to probably 70-75%. Same durations, 15, 20, 30 minutes, whatever. And all you want to do with that is obviously improve your metabolic flexibility and teach your body to use lactators if you're soft. Okay, so yep. that's the kind of go out for a ride, choose a couple of like 20 minute blocks where you don't really have too many steep climbs or steep descents, yep. hold a nice consistent power, that's 75% of FTPs you see, yep. and yep. then have a bit of a break between maybe 15 minutes yep. or so. 20 minutes, whatever, or if you have a four hour ride, do one in the first hour and one in the third hour. I think what's probably important also for you guys to know about doing that session is the entire aim of not having any climbs or any descents is so that you don't have to spike your power if you're using a power meter or a heart rate you want to hold it at the same kind of power throughout the entire thing don't be spiking your power up to bring your power number up you want to just hold a very consistent power um, all the way throughout so that your your heart rate stays nice and consistent as well yeah correct okay cool so that's all seems pretty simple so far yeah. on to our third session what have you got for us for the third base training session uh, third session is your standard which I, I love my always go-to session is your low cadence uh, neuromuscular worth obviously run a big gear depending on your level of, of obviously of rider or, or athlete is I would run anything from four minutes or ten minutes and that would be anything a cadence of say 50 to 60 if you haven't done the work before and if you are conditioned to it and you've done some of the work like in our previous videos I would bring that down to say 40 40 to 50 rpm for a four minute you can probably run a lower cadence for a 10 minute you can run a slightly higher cadence so I mean yeah if you've watched any of the previous videos you guys would have seen the low cadence work is really choose a steep climb somewhere yeah. that really gives you a good amount of resistance against you and against the bike and the drivetrain so you can hold a nice low cadence put the bike in a big gear really force the gear over roll it over keep your body nice and stable the reason i know a lot about this is because i've done a whole bunch of them because <laughs> john's my coach so <laughs> i did a lot of these at the start of the year but yeah really try and hold yourself nice and stable for these ones and, and then, then sort of whatever your duration is is uh, do that in terms of recovery at the same time yeah cool yeah. so if you do 10 minutes of low cadence 10 minutes off of easy high cadence recovery yeah cool like a zone one yeah super easy okay awesome all right and then that sort of brings us up to i guess we're up to our fourth and yeah. final correct Is that the fourth and final yeah i think yeah what are you thinking for that final session if people have sort of exhausted all those other options or they want to change it up a little bit what have you got next there I would do it on sort of one of your easier recovery days would be your fasted ride. So no breakfast in the morning. You can drink coffee, obviously get some caffeine in you, water only during the ride and go out super easy zone one, zone two. As I said, you can supplement that for, for your recovery ride. So if you had done whatever, three, four hours the day before, you can do one and a half, two hours, yeah, fasted ride and really good. And for that, I guess one of the big things is don't go too hard and also don't go for too long, hey? Yeah, correct, because you've got to come back and, and you are Completed, you know at the end of the day so so your key is just to keep it easy and, and make it home. just a nice easy fast yeah. recovery ride yeah correct and just out of interest can you explain the point of a fasted ride because I think there is some misconception around fasted riding being a need to lose weight but it's not really about that no not at all you want to stimulate your PGC 1, one alpha which uh, if you put it in simple terms it's your endurance endurance gene and you want to kind of kickstart that yeah cool so it's not at all about weight weight loss. No. 
No, no, not yeah. really. I've tried it, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's why this body's skinny. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's not about weight loss. No, <laughs> no, no. Just obviously when you remember when you do come back, especially when you are first doing those, just be cautious. Not in terms of that they're dangerous, but you don't want to kind of come home and, and, and eat the fridge. You still want to kind of kind of get the benefit of that session after it, once you've come home. Come back, have your normal breakfast as you would. So don't kind of, because you've been fasted and you you've done the session you now think okay i need to feel more when i get home that's not the case just eat normally as you normally do when you get home so get home eat a regular amount of food yeah don't overeat don't overcompensate yeah don't, don't overcompensate yeah cool yeah awesome now just before we wrap up this video i just have one more question for you and that is how often should people do these sorts of base training sessions at the start of their season. They shouldn't obviously just go out there and do the same thing every day. What do you usually recommend for the number of times people should integrate these every week, say for that first month to two months of their getting back on the bike and getting into the rhythm of training? Yeah, so what I would recommend is sort of two days a week and separate them you know, three, three days apart. So hypothetically, Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday, Saturday, something like that. And the importance is, is during this period, you want to ride your, your bike. So make sure that you're doing more riding and having fun than you are doing prescribed structured training. You know, so add the structure in where it's important to get the benefit, you want to get the stimulus, but just spread it out because later on in the season, you will have that constant where sessions are closer and, and so on and so forth. So for now, main focus, riding your bike, add the key sessions in, but spread them out throughout that week and do two a week and you'll be good to go. Another point also to, to, to bring up is obviously it is time dependent, but look at maybe doing two or three day blocks. So like two big rides in a session, like a key session, followed by a recovery day or a rest day and then another three again you know and, and block them like that then you get also a really good benefit from that yeah cool yeah. doing little blocks and yeah having right. a break yeah perfect okay cool uh as always thank you to john for uh giving us this advice we're here at science for sport as i've said many times <coughs> now and if you've seen any videos with john and i you'll know exactly where we are we're in the center of Girona. john runs science for sport and he is a professional coach if you are interested in being coached by john or science for sport they Maybe not John, because you're pretty busy these days. <laughs> After 12 months of making these videos, I'm making your videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a star <laughs> busy now. making my videos. Um, John's not always available for coaching, but John and Science to Sport do offer professional cycling coaching. So if you're looking to improve your cycling, take your ability to the next level, get in touch with John. There's an email address down in the description. You can see all the info on the Science to Sport website as well. So thank you once again. Pleasure. And, uh, Thanks for having me. We will see you in the next video very, very shortly. Cheers. Adios.